It's going to be short and sweet today, shouldn't it? How you guys doing? All right. Finished up our last padded practice of the week. Um, we'll be in the stadium tomorrow with uh, game simulation, game situations, just a lot of the logistic stuff. So not a not a very physical practice tomorrow, um, but a lot of uh, you know a lot of mental thinking, focus, uh, kind of operations uh, in special situations, maybe that you don't cover as much, uh, you know, through all throughout the year. So. Um, you know, it's kind of the, you know the last little prep, and then you know game week starts Friday because you know for us fr this Friday is Sunday. So, uh, you know, really harping on the kids about you know recovery treatment, you know, getting in the whirlpools right now, getting their legs back fresh. Uh, you know, getting a couple of guys will be in, you know, giving them a couple of days right here just to you know get some bumps and bruises healed up. That way we're full steam ahead on Friday. Don't you guys add uh, the, the West Virginia transfer? Uh, more. Can you just talk us uh, or tell us through his background how he might fit in? Well, you know, we've been talking to him for a while. It just sometimes it takes a while to get that stuff processed. So, but you know, Lorenzo's an older player. Um, you know, he was looking for an opportunity to play a little bit more. He was a, you know, played special teams a lot at West Virginia. Uh, played a little bit at running back. Uh, we've got a lot of practice tape on him. But you know, very intelligent young man. Um, you know, strong character. Uh, you know, has, has some ability. You know, he's got good quickness, good speed, good hips. Uh, so I think he's just a, a, you know, with that room as young as it is. You know, you just you can you're a little concerned, you know, past the first two, just with experience right now, and so I think he gives us a guy that can uh, you know help us in time once he you know gets the playbook down, uh, you know, to be a, a third guy, fourth guy somewhere in there, and then you know play situationally, uh, stuff like that. So excited to have him with us. Is he realistic? I guess to like dress for the first game, or you just have to kind of see. How we'll see. I mean, he's eligible to dress for the first game. Yes. I mean, it's just. It's going to be just – now, he's, he's picked it up pretty quick. I mean, he's not an 18-year-old kid. He's been in a system very similar to ours at West Virginia. So it's, it's not like it was completely foreign to him. But, uh, you know, it's tough to pick it all up in a week and a half. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Where are you at with film, I guess, on App State? Will, will Friday serve as a day when that really picks up? or, or you, yeah. well, We've been watching them all week, you know, with yeah. the kids. Of course, we, you know, we spent a significant amount of time this summer breaking them down. And, they haven't played a game since their bowl game, so we've got about all the film you can you can get on them. But um, you know, we've spent a lot of time this week with uh, you know scouting reports. You know, and and the good thing is, with a little bit extra time, we're able to take it kind of piece by piece instead of giving the kids everything at once, uh, which is good. You, a lot of the young guys, first time ever going through this uh, install, you can slow it down a little bit. But uh, so we've basically been through it once, and then we'll start Friday reinstalling again. So you get the game plan twice. Uh, before the opener. How do you manage the anxiety and the energy of getting to next Thursday? How do you hold them back but have them right ready to go at the same time? Well, I mean, I think, you know, they're going to be excited. Um, I think we got to get, uh, you know, get through the weekend because that's, you know, when the heavy work for, you know, both us and Appalachian will be is, you know, through the weekend. Um, and then, uh, you know, the closer it gets to Thursday, the excitement's going to be there. Um, that's where I am. I am glad that we do have uh, experience coming back now. You know, we don't have the experience that they have coming back. You know, I looked at their, their depth charts today, and it's virtually everybody in their two deep is a junior or a senior. Uh, and so, but I think that experience does help uh, with, you know, not being quite as jittery for the first game. A lot different than last year. It seems like uh, Ryan Jones has made some strides in maybe the yes. last week or so. Is that, right. obviously, his game's getting closer. Is that a good sign? Yeah, I think he's made significant strides. Um, you know, it's... He's probably done better than I expected this fall. You know, this the spring, all of a sudden you throw him in there playing tight end, and you know he's an elite athlete. But you know, that's that's a whole different world right there. You know, he was a defensive player at Oklahoma. So, uh, but you know, I think Latrell Scott's done an exceptional job with him. You know, he's done a, a great job connecting with him on a personal level, and he's done a great job developing him. And and Ryan, the one thing you know he has shown is he's not shy of contact. So. As far as the blocking goes, um, you know, it's just fundamentals is the big thing. And he's really improved there. Um, and he gives us, you know, great depth and a guy that uh, that you'll see play a lot for us. You weren't fired up about the defense yesterday. Did they, did they play better today? Better. It, you know, it's, you know, you got to be careful. You rip their butt one day and you got to be careful what happens the next. And it's, but it's it's learning how to practice. Because when, it, when, when it's good on good, you know, it's, 
it's fast, you know, it's experienced guys, they know how to practice. You know, there you're just you, – you, you just don't want the huge blow-up collisions on the ball carriers, you know, which if I, if I turn them loose, that's what you're going to get. Um, you know, when it gets to going against the scouts, it's getting the scouts to go fast enough, getting the backs to go fast enough, and getting the defense to fit. And the big thing we focused on today is just getting, getting our hips and feet to the tackle in the, in the thud tempo. So um, it's frustrating every year the first couple of days of uh, the scout group. Coach, can you touch on the uh, the padded helmets? I don't know if you've already talked about that. But, uh, I haven't. Um, you know, it's they've been around for a while. Uh, we looked at them at James Madison uh, and looked at all the data. Uh, you know, and really, you know, the the only reason made the decision to do it here is just you know we we have gotten to where we're a very physical practice team, uh, and you know when you get to that point, it's anything I can do to make sure that uh, you know we're protecting the players, and so. Um, you know, I think, you know, how much of a difference does it make is is debatable. But if it uh, if it helps any, then it's worth the investment. Coach, outside of the padded helmets, I've seen guys in some special type of jackets and maybe monitoring yep. all their vitals at that particular time. Is that something new this all season? Yeah. So it's a it's a GPS system, and it gives you all kinds of data. Uh, now I'm not going to sit here and say that I I know exactly how to use all of it yet. But the one thing that's pretty easy to see is the volume, uh, you know, on on their legs, and we used it significantly through preseason camp on some of our some of our receivers, DBs primarily. You know, we put them on somebody at every position, but I was really you know kind of shocked looking at the volume that some of the guys were running during a practice. I mean, when you're when you're running, you know, 7,500 yards during a practice, I mean, that's a lot, you know, and so it's it's something that we're going to use as a resource, um, you know, it's. Right now, we're kind of trying to establish baselines for what it looks like every day, and we've we've kind of figured out who our high volume guys are based on, you know, the position they play, special teams roles, things like that. And so I think it's something that we can use to, you know, keep us fresh down the stretch. I would, I would say late season is where we use it the most. Okay, have fun with the coordinators. Coach, uh, it sounds like Mason's the number two guy. Just talk us through what went into that decision. Well, I think that uh, Mason's had a good opportunity to be that number two. And, uh, you know, I guess I made a lot of comments. I don't know what Coach had said exactly, that nobody separated or whatever, that we'd watch that last scrimmage and uh, go back and review really the last week of practice. And when he did that and we did that, he, he gave us the best chance. We thought he was trending the best way. Tremendous talent, you know what I'm saying, just needs more playing time. We feel good about him. He's got one game experience in there. You know, I hope that we could play him, you know, in a role where he didn't have to start right away. But you don't always have that luxury. But uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about Mason's future. If something, I guess, were to happen, knock on wood, you might want to. But uh, <laughs> would he be ready? You know, would you feel comfortable if, if he were to have to go in for a series, a couple of plays or something? Well, you know, I'd probably throw up in my mouth a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you there a little bit. But, no, I really would. You know what I'm saying? We, we would have a package ready for him. Obviously, I don't think he's ready to be Holt Nailers, you know what I'm saying, with that experience and have maybe the complete playbook with checks and, you know, different things like that available to him. But at the same time, he's got great ability. You know, we know he, he's a great dual threat. He can run. He's big. You know, he, he can be physical. And he has got a cannon for an arm. And so, yeah, we'd roll with him. I mean, every day we, we, when, they are, when they're in there, they're playing like they're the starter. Every day in the meeting room, you know, they're responsible to be preparing just like they're the starter. So uh, you're, you're never probably totally ready till you get out there. But he's been out there. So I, I really would expect him to be excited and ready to go. Coach, what about the rest of the quarterback room? Uh, how are they looking? Well, it gets to the point when the season gets ready to start, and that's kind of what we're in right now. We've kind of gone from phase one to phase two. Now we're in game, you know, like mode. The the other guys don't get a lot of reps. You know what I'm saying? The number three guy kind of learns by osmosis. He kind of stands. He gets a few skelly reps. He gets to throw the drills. He gets to do the one-on-ones. But he has to just participate mentally because you just don't have enough time to – or you can't put the lineman through all those reps for that guy to get, you know, very many reps. So – uh, right now, Ryan Stubblefield looks like he's probably would be the third guy to go. Alex Flynn's still in there competing with that a little bit, I think. Uh, so Stubby could bring some – he's got some energy now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I had said earlier in the scrimmages in the stadium, 
our threes and twos were, were not very good. They kind of made the scrimmages a little bit ugly at times. But on the field out there, Ryan has definitely shown some uh, ability to move the ball, though. So he's a guy who's just not going to get a lot of reps right now because you're the, you're the number three. How much more, I guess, freedom is Holton having out the line? I mean, I know you guys sort of check with me stuff, but can yeah. he change things on his own at this point? Well, more and more, yeah. And, and as he continues to make good decisions, you know, we will continue to, to let him do that more and more. Today's game, though, defenses are just so multiple now. I mean, when I went to college, you know, the, the offense playbook was about, was about this thick and the defense was like a flyer. You know what I'm saying? You, you ran the 50 defense or you were a four down. You maybe had one change up. Now, their playbook's bigger than our playbook. They've got so many different personnel groupings in there, so many different stunts. Nobody plays base defense. Everybody's got some kind of a scheme going. So you have to have the ability – for your quarterback to get you out of some bad looks because there's going to be some overloads, there's going to be some bad looks, and get you into another play. So a lot of it's just that. You just got to make some checks. And then, you know, then the rest of it, quarterbacks have to make decisions on everything, you know, it, not just the RPO game, do you run, do you pass, but you got to make decisions on reads and different things like that. The other big thing with, with our system is the quarterbacks – have to know the protection, so they have to line up. So they've got to see where the pressure's coming, and that's a, and that's different. There are different keys every week. Uh, Appalachian State's defense is not that different from our own defense in far as the way they initially line up, but all the tendencies, all the keys are different. So now we've been in 14, 15 practices, and we've been coaching – you know, what's the safety? He will give this away, or this linebacker does this. Now – we're in, and we got a couple extra days, which is kind of nice on that first game. Those, those tendencies are no more. Now we're having to study. Well, their their tendency is this. You, you've got to look for this. With the running backs, how fresh are Rajay and Keith? You know, Rajay didn't get a ton of carries Saturday. Yeah. I mean, it, it, was there some intent, obviously, in keeping those guys kind of ready to go? Yeah, we neither scrimmage did Keaton or Rajay get a lot of the reps. Now they got a lot of the reps, you know, in the practices out there. But the emphasis in the scrimmages really were who would be the next guy. You know what I'm saying? we got to find that third guy. We've got some good competition going on there uh, for that. That will be an ongoing competition. But they've played a lot. The running backs take so much punishment. They give out some punishment, but they take so many hits that you just can't afford to, to get those guys too banged up. And uh, so we rested them as much as we can. Now, they're, they're workers. They don't like to, to not be in there. They're competitive kids. And, and they've got their own little friendly rivalry going as well, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't try to get in the way of that. But they know the ones that count for them are the ones in the games. Maceo, is he repping now at receiver again, or is he still going back and forth? Well, he's going to have to do both. He's going to have to be that hybrid player that, as you know, somebody's out this week, you're going to have to go do this. He did a great job through the most part of the camp playing running back. I think there are some, some plays or some situations where he's a pretty good back, you know, especially third down, some different things like that, some of the wider type plays. He can really give you uh, a burst of, of speed there. With Tyler Sneed, who was out, now Tyler could have went. Tyler's fine. Tyler's played a 1,000 some plays, you know, whatever. So, you know, the trainer was like, well, we, I think he can go to scrimmage. And we're like, why? You know, why would we put him out there right now? Tyler Sneed's the same every day. As Houghton told me, he said, I think Tyler, as long as he's there for pregame, I think he'll be fine. He'll play the same game. But with him down, we kind of started to notice Josiah was out. He was out. Okay. Well, Maybe some of the other guys are not quite ready. Maybe Mesos had a good camp. Let's put him in here. So he's just going to really be the emergency player that's going to have to fill in everywhere. And we'll have to work him both ways. So he has to kind of get with the receiver coaches. He has to kind of get with the running back coaches. And he has to kind of got to know both. But he's a sharp enough guy that he can do that. Cool. Pass, we haven't used the tight ends a whole heck of a lot. How has the depth in that room allowed you to utilize them more? Well, we haven't thrown it to them maybe as much, you know, as, as we would like to have thrown it to them. Uh, some of that was because maybe that's not probably what they were good at. Well, I say when we got here, I've told the story many times, we, we didn't have a tight end. You know, Xavier Smith, I guess, had been the tight end. He, he was going back to linebacker. 
So we had we had one guy, I guess he came back, he'd had a broke hand the year before, and you know, really he had hands like feet, so he really couldn't catch it, so we didn't throw it to him very often. Anyhow, Jeremy Lewis, we would have thrown it to more. He did catch a touchdown early in the year, and then he stayed hurt most of the year, so we didn't get a chance to do that. But the tight ends were in there blocking like crazy. They, they've been in there a lot. We're a lot of tight end formations, a lot of tight end, you know, different guys. This year, though, we can throw it to them. Uh, Shane Calhoun kind of came on last year, had a pretty good rookie season, you know, really went by my expectation. I thought he'd be good. I didn't think he'd be that good that early. Ryan Jones, obviously, is a receiving type tight end. So, you know, when you get one, then you kind of get two, then you start saying, well, now we can put more stuff in. Okay, put more stuff in. And so, right now, in practice, we're throwing it to him quite a bit out there. Jones, he seems to be picking it up just watching the last few you know, he's, he's as good an athlete as anybody around, and, and we knew that. We had some friends, obviously, that were at the school that he came from, and they said, you know, he's going to probably be one of your best athletes on the team, if not your best athlete. Now, he, he played a lot of different positions. He played all defense. Uh, in high school, he was a true wide receiver. You know, he's 240-some pounds now, so he's not really going to be a, you know, prototypical type wide receiver. He needs to be that hybrid tight end. But he got here, he had to learn, you know, what are the signals, what are the plays. You guys are crazy the way y'all practice out here and all the things. He had to learn all those different things. This, this camp will come back after being here for spring and summer. He's been a total new, new guy. Now he knows what to do. He's got a spring in his step. He, he's, he, he's, I think he's on the, the verge of breaking loose here. I really, I really hope that we can get him involved. But not only as a pass receiver, because those guys got a block too. Coach, what changes for you, for you for game week as you guys start to look to that end of this week? Well, you, you start to narrow down. You know, when you go through the camp, you have an install sheet. You're going to put this in day one. We're going to put this in day two. Then maybe day three you're going to repeat, you know, whatever. But you, you end up putting in something in every day. It's just install, install. Let's get this in here. Let's look at it. Let's see how this fits us. All right, let's change this. Let's move this. Now that we know we're playing one team, we're just narrowing everything down into this is what's good, we think, versus what they do. So your, your focus just narrows into the, the plays you're going to call, the formations you're going to call. You're not in, in, in the camp, you're playing everybody. Like I say, you look up, you know, who was in there. You know what I'm saying? Now it's a travel squad. You got about 30 some guys offensively that'll, that'll really be ready to play. So you're giving all your work on your field just to those guys. How scripted do you go? Well, uh, it's a game plan. It's, it's a game plan, and it's more of a situational scrimmage. You have plays that you would call on what we call P and 10, which is the first play of each drive, which you think are good openers based on the tendencies. Are they a pressure team? Are they a, play a little bit more conservatively on the first down of the, each series right there? You have second long. You know, you have third medium. You, you have all the different situations as you get into what's – the mythical red zone, you know, you have to, it kind of has to change based on their tendencies, goal line play. So you have all different sections, and then you kind of script within, like, well, this will probably be my first third long call. This will be my third, you know, first third medium call. So it's like that. And then there's a little thing usually before the game, most games, I probably do a little bit of the old Bill Walsh. I probably script a little lucky number of plays that I want to get run. A lot of that's because you think, obviously, well, these are going to work based on what you've been watching on tape. But also they're like, well, I want to set up maybe another play. So I'm going to make sure we run this, and then we see, well, how do they defend that? Or you're going to do a motion to see, like, well, what does that do to them? And then you might just have a play, well, this play will be okay. You know, this, this will be a pretty safe play. Later thinking, well, if they adjust like we hope they will adjust, that's where maybe that big play will come from. So that's kind of the process of, of what you do. All right. Coach, uh, I guess. First question always. <laughs> Coach Houston wasn't thrilled with the defense yesterday. They said it was better today. Just your thoughts on the early prep for, for Adam. Yeah, I think every day we can't miss an opportunity. I think I talked about that the other day. Uh, just every rep's got to be better. And as coaches, we expect that better than the last rep. The next rep's got to be even better and better and better. And, uh, you know, we're eight days out. we got to continue to have urgency to, to be ready for App State and, and make sure everything's ready, game ready. And, uh, you know, you see guys pushing that way. I think yesterday the heat probably buckled them a little bit, which is expected. But we, we kind of can't – you can't make excuses. It doesn't matter. It's hot. It doesn't matter. You're tired. It doesn't matter. 
Hey, you're eight days away. That should be enough to get you ready and get, get you right for uh, game time. Coach, can you talk about the depth, especially at the defensive line? It looks like that's uh, one of the big improvements on your defense this year. Yeah, excited about our depth all, all along our defense. Um, you know, up front, in the back, linebacker, wherever it may be. We expect uh, we have a lot of guys that can go play and, and it's played in the ball game. And anytime you have experience coming back, it, it makes your job a little bit easier as coaches. Um, and we got to keep put, continue to build that depth and keep pushing those guys forward, obviously. Uh, but we've got some guys, especially on the edge, that we feel like we're pretty solid too deep. And the guys inside, you know, they've played at least in some ball games. They still may be, uh, you know, first and second year players for the most part. But you know, you feel good that they, they've at least played in a ball game. A lot better shape than where a year ago, for sure. As you guys set the travel roster, what ideally are you looking for as far as the D line or rotation? Like, is there a set number? Nah, we don't, we don't have a set number, so to speak. Uh, you know, I think last year we, we did rotate a whole lot of bodies early on, and that was, you know, you're coming off COVID and you're coming off, the, you know, all that stuff. So it's, it's a different story there. Um, ideally, like, you'd like to play too deep for sure up front to keep those guys rotating and fresh. If we have to dig into a third guy or five guys on the edge for two spots or five guys inside for two spots, uh, you'd be okay with that. What, what happens is you get down to, if you're rotating, you know, ones, twos, and threes all throughout practice, are they really getting enough reps to be game ready? Are they really seeing enough looks to be ready for App State or any football team that this fall? So you would like to say, hey, these four guys handle these two spots or these five guys handle these two spots. That way, every rep they get, they feel like, hey, come game time, I've seen everything I'm going to see, and I'm prepared, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Andrew, I'm sure is a guy, obviously, that a lot of people are ready to, to see in a, a game action again. Where does he best fit in this kind of linebackers? And is he, you know, what kind of impact do you expect from him next week? Yeah, I'm ready to see Aaron too. I mean, you, we see flashes, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to see some consistency out of him. And that's that's the big thing. Is we've all seen him from here and there. Whether it's two years ago, I think the UCF game, last year USF game, you see flashes that hey, he he can go stop and run, and he can get it on the ground, and he can trigger and fit holes and, and tackle ball carries and do all those things. We just got to see that on a consistent basis from Aaron. And he's getting there. He wants to. It's not that he doesn't want to. You know, it's just that he's got to be consistent every single day. The one thing he's done this fall camp and this preseason to this point is stay healthy, which uh, he wasn't able to last year. So that's been a big plus for him. He's certainly in that rotation, and, and we just got to make sure he's locked in and game ready for App State. You look at App State, I think one of their receivers, Sutton, didn't play last year, and obviously the quarterback wasn't at App State. And where are you at just with some of those factors as far as just game planning and knowing what to expect? Yeah, so there's some unknown there. You, you've got a, uh, a receiver didn't play last year who caught 50 balls the year before. you got Bryce coming over from Duke, new offense system for him. So he's played at you know, three different colleges now, Clemson, Duke, and now he's at App State. you got a new offense coordinator in Ponce that uh, was, was at Louisville. But, you know, you look at it, they're really kind of all in, still in the same family. I mean, Sutton, he was a big factor for him two years ago. You know, uh, Hennigan caught 80 balls that year. He caught 50 balls. We kind of see them the same. Maybe Sutton's got a little bit better speed. You know, I don't know. Both really dang good football players. I know that. Um, Ponce was there at App State before. Comes back. You know, you think they're going to still run the outside zone, the stretch play, throw play action pass, spread you out. You know, maybe he brings some of his stuff from Louisville in the third down passing game or in the, in the red zone there. So, And the quarterback, you know, uh, I think he's – I've been saying this. You know, I don't know if he gets – what kind of reputation he has coming from Duke. But he probably has a better system overall around him now. Receivers, tailbacks, O line, you know, just has a better supporting cast than maybe he had at, at Duke. And I'm not sure. I don't know much about Duke, but that would be my guess because App State's a dang good football team, and, and he's got you know really good set of receivers out there. Some O line that's nasty, and some tailbacks that's pretty deep and that's stable there. How much does Coach Dallas help with your defense? Just bringing you know new philosophy and also with the edge room. Yeah, he's done a great job in the edge room. And we're seeing guys come off the ball, come off the edge, and get the quarterback here in preseason and done a nice job just building some depth out there. And I think they're playing better than they ever have. And he's brought a you know, lot of new thoughts to the room, and that's always good to have. Hey, maybe this is how we twisted things here or did things there. And so it's been good for us to kind of adopt some of those things and add them into our little package here. What changes for you guys? As Coach said, game week starts on Friday. So what changes? Does there, is there a mentality switch? Yeah, so, so we've really been in App State preparation all week. You know, we finished up our last scrimmage last Saturday. Our App State preparation has been all week. But, you know, for, for coaches, guys that's been in the business for years and years, sometimes, you know, your preparation 11, 12, 13 days out 
it doesn't matter if it's three days out, it's still the same. Sometimes for a 19, 20 year old, you know, preparation from day 13, 13 days out versus eight days, seven days out may change. The urgency may change a little bit. So we got to keep ramping that up, make sure we tighten things up, make sure we, we communicate and, and, and ready to go. So that's, that's really the big part there is, is making sure those guys have the urgency and, and they're getting there and, and we're getting um, closer and closer every day. When you look at the defensive side of the ball, is there kind of like a, a player or two that really just kind of lives in the film room that kind of stands out to you? You know, Warren Safe is the guy that I always say, he's a coach on the field. He's always going to be in the right spot, doing the right thing, communicating. He can call out things pre-snap um, and does a really nice job with that. And, and I think, you know, I think we talked about this one maybe last week, a couple weeks ago, that he wants to do that one day as, as be a coach. Uh, Elijah Morris does it up front. So you kind of got some guys at every level. Um, and Elijah does a really nice job recognizing things, starting a film, picking things up. Um, you know, and Miles Berry's one kind of in the middle, middle there that's – and can pick up some things pre-snap. So if each of those guys, each position, and collectively as, as a side of the ball, uh, defensive unit, we will do that. We can be pretty, you know, have a chance to give ourselves an opportunity to win ball games.